This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Use code play to win 5 at the affiliate link down below for 5% off to help support the show. Welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. And this week, we are going to be rounding off 2023 by trying to figure out which commander printed in 2023 is best. In CDH. In CEDH, most importantly. Yeah, I'm excited. These are all the cards that we wanted to talk about last week, but we are waiting for this week. We've got to split it up. These are the commanders. This is the meat. This is the juice. This is the stuff that I think the most about. I think these cards. Me too. And I think we're going to find a lot of very interesting cards that we'll get to talk about here. Uh, this has been a very good year for CEDH in general. We got yeah. a lot of really good cards to add to our pool. And... In terms of legendary creatures we got, too, there are no slouches. Yeah, I think we got a lot of good ones. It's always hard to compare with the best of the best of CDH, I feel like. The Tim Necroms, the Najilas, the Tim does something else. It's oftentimes hard to get to that power level. A couple of the commanders from this year got pretty close, if not to that level. Yeah, if they're mm -hmm. not there, they're pretty damn close, like yeah. you said. Yeah, so let's jump right in. Let's talk about the first set that came out this year and talk about Phyrexia All Will Be One. Now, last week, if you catched... If you catched last week's episode, you'll know that we were pretty disappointed with Phyrexia All Will Be One in terms of CEDH card standards here. But we're going to be coming out right off the gate with one of our top cards. Do you want to get out your um, your whiteboard, by the way? Excellent choice. Yeah, let's pop that out real quick. This way we'll be ready. Because I know this card is going on the list. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What this are we is talking about? A, a Traxa Grand Unifier. Ooh, yeah. Atraxa has been good in a lot of different formats, I feel like. Or maybe not a lot of different formats. But I feel like I know it popped up in Legacy. I know that it is a card in Vintage. I think it's played in a standard deck. It definitely. I just put it together in a standard deck on Arena, actually. Really? Yeah. It, is, have you played it? Is it good? Yeah. It's a Beans deck. Ooh. It's so funny. That deck is ridiculous for a whole nother level. Uh, This card, Atraxa, powerful. Should I read Atraxa? Let's read Atraxa. So this is three, a green, a white, a blue, and a black for a legendary Phyrexian angel. That's a 7-7. Seven, seven. It has flying, vigilance, death touch, and lifelink. And when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each card type, you put a card of that type from the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I got lost in the middle of the card. It's a lot of words. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. And it's it's the altar art version, like the borderless oh, version. So like it's a little bit harder to read. You got the keywords though, right? Yeah, there's one keyword for each color. And the 7-7. Seven, seven. And the ATB trigger, which is the most important part. Puts around five cards in your hand. That's what it does. Exactly. This it card has been a powerful food chain commander. I think it's broken onto the scene in a kind of unique way. We haven't really seen seven mana commanders that you are actually paying seven mana for, like, do well, really, in CDH yet. There's been a couple that are close. Goto is expensive. Nimizid is expensive. These are expensive. Is there a seven mana one? All of the seven mana ones came that out this year. I think out are, came out this year. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think... This deck really took advantage of the fact that the meta was slowing down and it had really good outlets to not just Food Chain, but also Displacer Kitten. Displacer Kitten having a line with the three mana to fairy. Um, oh God, I could have sworn I remember the name of that one. But three fairy. Three fairy yeah. and a mana rock, allowing you to draw a good chunk of cards, make a decent amount of mana, and in the right scenario, be able to flicker your Atraxa as well to buy back the Enter the Battlefield trigger too. Yeah, the only issue that I have with Atraxa is sometimes when you're mulliganing, it feels kind of bad that you're not playing Tim Nathrasios. There's a lot of hands you have to throw back because they just don't do anything. Whereas if you were playing Tim Nathrasios, you could at least cast your commanders and start getting advantage early. Have so, a quick engine going. Yeah, exactly. But you sacrifice that with you know a lot of uh, late game power in Atraxa and also just like a different type of outlet in your command zone. I didn't particularly love this deck a ton when I played it. There were some card choices that I made that I probably would change going back, but a lot of other people have found a ton of success, so Commander is undoubtedly really good. Out of all of the ones we've talked about, this one's the best. Yeah, definitely. I'm this honestly, is the only one so far. <laughs> <laughs> but I honestly think this card is going to stay towards the top of the list, even as we start to add a ton more Commanders to this list. I put it near the top of my board, if you can tell. I'm not yeah. sure if there was something better than Atraxa. I can't think of anything right now, but I've been wrong before. And There's one or two things that I think think could rival it but i don't know where we're gonna put them but we'll get there uh the only other commander that i wanted to talk about from phyrexia all will be one is phyrexia herself elish norn mother of machines sure 
four and a white for a 4-7 Phyrexian Praetor with Vigilance. It says, if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a trigger ability of a permanent you control the trigger, the ability triggers an additional time. Permanents entering the battlefield don't cause abilities of permanents your opponents control the trigger, though. This card I like more than 99, and I don't like it a ton there. Me too. I think I messed up, and I probably should have put this on last week's list yeah. instead of this one. It's a nice silver bullet. Um, I like that it stops Stasis Oracle stuff, although at 5 mana, that seems like too much for that. I like that it doubles your own Dockside, although at 5 mana, that seems too much for that. But... Uh, putting both of those on the same thing, that seems pretty good. I don't love playing with a stacks piece in the yeah. command zone. And I think in white, you probably have some better options for that too. Um, but I think this was a mistake that I made. And um, <laughs> we're just going to live with it. So, all right. Do you think me, this is better than Atraxa? Definitely worse. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's talk about March of the Machines next. And we okay, have a yeah. thick stack of commanders to get through here, Dylan. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's start off with Heliod the Radiant Dawn. So, this is two and two white for a 4 4 legendary creature enchantment god. When Heliod enters the battlefield, return target enchantment that isn't a god from your graveyard to your hand. And you can pay three and a Phyrexian blue to transform it at sorcery speed into Heliod the Warped Eclipse, which is now a 4-6 that says that you can cast spells as though they had flash. And spells you cast cost one less for each card your opponents have drawn this turn. Yeah, I know this card is powerful mainly for that backside, being able to cast things at flash and have them be reduced. Uh, I know our patron Kawaja plays this commander quite a bit, and I've seen him do some crazy things with this deck. I haven't seen it a ton outside of Kawaja and maybe a couple others, but the commander is powerful. It doesn't quite seem like it. It's a kind of hard one to evaluate, but I think this commander is kind of strong. I think the commander has a smaller community than some other commanders that were printed this year, but I think what that community has been able to do with this commander is still very impressive. Where this Heliod really shines is with wheels. Because you can cast wheels at instant speed, your opponents will draw anywhere from like 21 cards. If you windfall at the right time, it could be more than that. So that all of your spells will only cost their mana, their color mana requirements. And if your brain's big enough, there's a lot of cool lines you can put together with that. So I, I don't know if it's the best commander that was printed this year, but it's a very powerful option that you have in a color combination that doesn't typically get a lot of love. Yeah, I have it under Heliod right now just because it tracks it is card advantage and four colors, and that's really powerful in our format. But Heliod is definitely unique and it can do some powerful things in cdh i definitely think it's viable just a little bit lower power right out the bat thalia and the gitrog monster is one a green a white and a black for a first strike death touch 4-4 creature that has three other abilities one you may play an additional land on each of your turns two creatures and non-basic lands your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped and whenever it attacks you can sacrifice a creature or land to draw a card this card, we were just talking about how stacks pieces in the command zone, maybe not so great. This one, I think we'll maybe go back on that a little bit. Well, I, this is a little bit more than just being a stacks piece in the command zone. And maybe that's why. That ability to also sacrifice a creature, if you're playing Hulk lines, this can also be a win condition in the command zone. As long as you get that Hulk out, you have to wait to attack. But if you can do that, you can sacrifice your Hulk and go through your win. And then not only that, it can slow down your opponents in the meantime. And I don't know if you've ever played with the first strike death toucher before, but it doesn't lose combat. Yeah, very very helpful when sometimes people want to attack you just because they want to get your stacks pieces off the board if you have the best blocker in the world that can be really hard to do being able to play extra lands can also help make up for the card draw that you're getting to if you're sacrificing your lands instead of creatures as well so the only issue is you have to sacrifice creature you're yeah. forced to so if you do the attack you have to sacrifice it so just remember that like don't unnecessarily sacrifice a land if you don't need to you can just hold back and have the stacks effects be that that's another issue is this isn't really card advantage a lot of times if you're in strategies like this abs and strategies you want to lean into timna for the card advantage yeah. it's just so important you have to either be like sacrificing your protean hulk like you said or be getting rid of a stacks piece so that you can win the game with like wither bloom chain of smog just in case you had a rule of law creature yeah something like that i agree so it, it can be a little bit tricky it's not quite as consistent as a timna deck but what it lacks in consistency it makes up for in like uniqueness and power so out of the list we're talking about so far i think it's under atraxa and above the other two i would think so too yeah because this deck does pull some wins out there's a lot of good powerful cards in these colors 
wrestlers, and with the right combination of them, you can win a lot of matchups. Yeah, we thought about this one definitely. It was in contention for best CDH commander of the year when we made our gameplay episode. This was one of the two or three decks that was on the list for the that four, and we didn't end up going with, but it's still on that list. This one, I think, fell off a little bit more. But this is Kroxa and Kyranos. This is three, a red, a white, and a black for a Vigilance Menace lifelink 6-6 six, six creature. And when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may exile five cards from your graveyard. And when you do, you can return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. I kind of rate Kroxa basically the worst out of the commanders that we've talked about. Definitely worse than Atraxa, Thalia, and Gitrog, and Heliod. Um, I also think Elish Norn is a little bit more relevant. Kroxa just feels like there's too many hoops you have to go through and too many other things are better to do in Mardu colors. I kind of either want to be playing Tim Nijeska or I want to be playing Diada. The, the comparisons to what you can do with that color pairing is really high. Um, so for that reason, I, I kind of just don't think Kroxa is quite as powerful or as consistent. The, others two, the other two are a little bit more helpful. Oh, this is the one that you needed like Altar of Dementia to help fill your graveyard. So like with this and Underworld Breach, you could... Oh, sure. Like, mill out, mill yourself down. Yeah, if you're going to do that, why not do Tim to Dargo and do those loops with Dargo? And I think that's what people ended up realizing over the course of Mardu Summer this past year was that, like, Dayata, Dargo, Rograk, like, these were just, even, like, Tim the Jessica, like, you played for a bunch of the year. I, I think these were the strategies that just ended up being more powerful when you had card draw plus another option in your command zone. The reality of CDH, I think, is if you're not in Ristic Study Colors, your command commander has to be like drawing cards this isn't always the case obviously but when you have the option like you're not in blue already so you can't also not have a commander that doesn't draw you cards yeah because or you're be already free lacking. or right. be free like day out is technically free kind of free yeah uh, rock rock is free like yes. you got to have some kind of yeah definitely. man advantage like that too but this one doesn't do either of those for me it doesn't do it it's unfortunate because the card is cool in theory Let's talk about our pet commander of the year, Yargle and Multani. Fuck yeah. This is an right 18 at the top. six. <laughs> yeah. This is right at the top of the list. So we played this deck a hilarious amount on the channel. Never won. Ne it never won a game. Never won. The whole strategy is playing things like Life's Legacy, Sacrifice, Creature, Draw, Cards Equal to Power. Do yep. something equal to power. Make mana equal to power. Yeah, something like that. Um, it's kind of... It's giant growth to kill your opponents because you can get them for 21 with that. It is definitely like a joke, but it is uh, also, I think, like realistically, if you, I don't know, if I invested some more time in it, I think I could make the deck better. I think it's I could make a it a good deck. It's a very like theoretical deck. Like yeah. in theory, you can actually do Just a lot with this deck. Yeah, you draw through your whole deck until you find your two card combo, and then you have tons of mana because you played yeah. a bunch of things that like let you sack your commander for 18 mana or whatever. Yeah, I think you suffer a little bit because green right now is in a little bit of a strange period in CDH where uh, its strengths are just not that powerful overall. So you are in a two colors, which is already not so good. And one of your colors is the worst color in the format. That's just not a great spot to start off with. No. And then on top of that, you have like, is it five or six mana? I don't it's even six remember. Mana. You have a yeah. six mana commander that doesn't actually do anything. And it's not like easy to cast. No. It's through. It's two black and a green yeah, <laughs> in like, addition yeah. to three yeah it's it's a little it's a little bit of a stretch but it's a fun commander to theory craft i think and i definitely am looking forward to tweaking it more in the future if we can find some more excuses to bring it back on the channel i will but oh we will i overall, have ideas already yeah we, not we have <laughs> the power level this day yeah. the next one is a tali primal conqueror this is five and two red for a trampoline seven seven that enters the battlefield with this trigger each player exiles the top card of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among the non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. And for nine and a green, it transforms into 11-11 uh, with Trample and Indestructible and gives poison counters to players when it gives combat damage to them. When it gives them combat damage, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Perfect. Here you go. Well said. Seven for you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let you talk about this commander a little bit because you've been playing this commander for a couple weeks or months at this point. Uh, a couple weeks. I, uh, maybe it is like a full month at this point now. Um, I've had a lot of fun with this commander, and I've had a lot of not fun with this commander. There's been a lot of games where like, you just completely explode out of nowhere. You're stealing a bunch of cards from your friend's decks, and you just can't lose those games because you have have 
someone's consecrated sphinx and someone's ranger captain of eos and like what are they supposed to do the problem with this deck is that unlike a lot of the other decks like atraxa like i think that's the big one i want to compare this to because this is another seven mana creature with an enter the battlefield ability that is getting you card advantage but this one gets you mana advantage in a way that atraxa doesn't however the colors that you're in for atraxa are significantly better after your commander is in play what i mean by that is atali gets atali into play and not all of your atalis are going to be good by the way some of them are going to get you like rampant growth effects and like just really bad cards that aren't really going to help progress you forward in terms of real advantage that you need all it will give you is just a seven seven but decks that have blue in them that can like help clone their commanders a little bit better are going to be able to trigger their enter the battlefields a lot more and then be able to accrue so much more advantage over the long term whereas the only effects you get for that in a tally are the things that combo with your dual caster mage which really feel bad because now it's like really setting you behind on yeah. your win that makes sense and also attracts it being blue means that part of the draw is you're finding interaction to protect your win whereas Itali doesn't quite do that as well sometimes you'll find a counter spell off of somebody else's library and you're not gonna be able to do anything with that because that's the thing you have to cast them right now right. you don't get to cast them later they all have to go on the stack right now Itali does give you gas and pushes you forward on the battlefield but attracts it finds you protection which i think is just more valuable in cdh right now protection from your your for your combo is is better and also being in four colors being in thassa's oracle like we don't have to talk about that much more like that's just no important. yeah but this deck definitely is going to steal some games i don't ever think it's going to be like the best deck in the pod statistically because like if you're going up against like Najila's and if you're going up against like Timnas and Crowns and stuff like that I think those are all just better than this so I think there's always going to be decks that I'm going to be afraid of at the table more but I think if you can use that to your advantage and don't go like too all in if you can like kind of hold yourself back a little bit with this deck and time things out properly I think you're going to be able to steal a lot of games how do you feel this one's better than Heliod I think this one is better than Heliod, yes. Better than Thalia and Gitrog? I think it is better than Thalia and Gitrog, too. But not as good as Atraxa. But not as good as Atraxa, no. This deck did make it to our best decks of 2023 game, so I do think it's definitely going to be in our top four here, but I think it's probably going to be towards the bottom half of the tw top four, I yeah, think. Yeah, I agree. I th yeah, Itali, like you said, can present some pretty powerful things, just not quite as consistent as you'd like it to be. And sometimes after you cast it and you get it out there, like, then what? Then, you know, then, it then that's do it. anything yeah. after that. You have, no. to, you have to either find a way to copy it again or like, but you just have a 7-7 seven, seven, doesn't do anything. Atraxa also has like ways to get Rhystic Study into play too. So like you have other ways to accrue advantage and Red Green does not have as consistent ways to get card advantage yeah you can't capitalize on, on it quite as much because it's not your spells half the time like you said you'll get a lanowar elf or something like well, okay that doesn't do anything yeah right. oh, great yeah thanks okay let's move on to are there more from this set so there's two from the commander set okay to talk about here uh slime foot and squee is the first one. Oh yeah yeah so this is a red a green and a black for a three three legendary fungus goblin when it enters the battlefield or attacks you create a one one green sapperling creature token you can pay one a red a green and a black to sacrifice a sapperlene then you get to return slime foot and squee and one other target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield so this creates an infinite loop with doxat extortionist if you have a sacrifice outlet in play you can sacrifice doxide and slime foot and squee and if your doxide is able to make five mana enough to pay for your slime foot and squee ability from the graveyard you can bring back slime foot and doxide and when slime foot comes in it makes the sapperling that you need to be able to activate slime foot and squee from the graveyard this deck seems neat. I've seen it do pretty well in some tournaments. It can excel, I think. It did well in our Cloud City tournament, it right? It did, yeah. yeah. I watched this deck do pretty good. It kind of surprised people because it doesn't read like it's very good, I don't think. No. But it actually, I think it can grind pretty well. This isn't a deck that I'm super interested in going into. I think if I do touch Jund right now, I'm still just so much more interested in Korvold, just me as a player. Especially now that Korvold got that like super new art. Was Very that a cool. secret lair? No, I think so. Yeah, the Year of the Dragon promo. I don't know That's, if it was secret okay, lair, yeah. but it was something like that. Just the new coolest thing they could have done for that commander. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Um, but I, I'm leaning more towards that way if I'm in Jund, I think. 
So this card is okay. It does a couple things okay. It gets a little bit of advantage. It can be a part of a combo piece, and I like that. But um, we're, this is a form where we can do some busted things. I think I want to. I want to do yeah. some. Yeah, I think if you if you're playing Jund and you're trying to lean more into. I need things to sacrifice to make my diabolic intent good, then this could be an option. But like, I'd even also rather play like a Rograk Ikra deck and like yeah. just sacrifice Roger instead. Yeah, I think I agree. Oh, yeah, I, I think I, I just agree. Yeah. O overall, having three pips in your command cost is actually kind of funnily it's, like it's a detriment. It can be a little bit tricky because I'm comparing like, yeah, like Rograk is just nicer sometimes because easier to cast or whatever. I know I was just talking about how Corvold, but. Corvold Treasure Dockside. I don't know. Big beater. Big beater. It's it's different. Draw cards. I, say yeah, more. Corvold's just cooler. Yeah. Moving on. Shalayan Halar. This is one of red and green and white for a 3-3 legendary angel elf with flying and vigilance. And whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, it deals that much damage to target opponent. I don't love this one. Neither do I. So the reason why this is on the list is that it's actually a two-card combo, a two-card combo because it's technically the third card, but it's in your command zone, so you always have it. Thank but you for it, saying that this time. Yeah, yes. So it works with the Dockside and Emil combo because the text I always forget on Emil is that it puts a plus one, plus one counter on the creature when it comes into play. Oh, yeah. And that's what triggers Shalai to be able to deal a damage to someone. So if you are able to – you don't even have to make infinite – mana you just have to be able to make three treasures with dock side so you can keep blinking it and that way you can deal damage to the whole table yeah okay that's neat doesn't Marath also win with Dockside and the Unicorn? Yeah, but Marath wasn't printed this year. That's true, but Marath does things. It, like, pings down creatures. And, <laughs> it, like, like, it interacts with stuff. For, like, stuff. less than this huge cost. To me, it seems like Marath is just so much better than this one. I would rather play Marath than this, yeah. I think this card is also a one-card win with All Will Be One no, or something. No, no, no. So, no. So, so I said that in the Jeopardy episode. Oh, and then we were wrong? I was wrong, yeah. Oh I referenced God. that in last week's episode episode and then i put the right card it's uh the red terror combos with all will be one okay this doesn't this doesn't no and this card fucking sucks this is like another <laughs> all will be one okay. basically yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. has like the same words as all will be one okay i don't like it there's better options in naya i'm playing either rocco or i'm playing marath if i want to do this type of stuff i want to play marath i think if i want to do better stuff i'll play rocco or you can play minx too right <laughs> yeah. i could let's realistically every naya deck yeah right. realistically yeah. i would like to splash black and play blood pod that's what i want to play instead of this deck and that's what i'll do moving on let's talk about aftermath because aftermath did not get a lot of attention last week so we're going to make sure it gets some this week here let's let's do it first one we're going to talk about is narset enlightened exile this is one a white a blue and a red I don't know fuck <laughs> colors for a three, four legendary human monk. It says creatures you control have prowess. And it says whenever it attacks exile target, non-creature, non-land card with mana value less than Narset's power from a graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. This is not just instants or sorceries. This is enchantments too, which is, I think what pushes this over the edge. This is not even your own graveyard. No. Am I wrong in saying that you can cast your opponent's Mystic Remoras after they let it die to their upkeep triggers? You're correct. That's nuts. Like, the grind potential that you can get with this commander is so powerful. It reads like it should say a certain card type out of just your graveyard. Like, this type of thing normally says that. But the fact that it's your opponent's graveyards and it's... what What's the condition on the thing? If its mana value is less than Narset's power, which, by the which way... Which is what? It's three but it can fluctuate because of I've prowess had, i've had this narset steal my smothering tithe yeah that's, that's pretty good. nuts i think this narset's very strong the only issue is i just i only know one player that's played it i just know kai i haven't yeah. seen a lot of other people play it i'm nervous that this is one of those decks that's only good in like the people's hands who spend a lot of time on it and tweak it and it's not a deck that just like anyone's going to be able to pick up which is a phenomenon that does happen with a lot of decks and hurts a lot of decks yeah that's true we should Get it on the channel a little bit more. I think this one's quite strong. For now, I kind of put it under Thalia and Gitrog, um, just because I've seen Thalia and Gitrog so a little I bit more. I feel like this is a little less explored. I would agree, yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised. If you asked me again in six months, I'd probably swap those. Yeah, I might I might be off on that, yeah. But yeah. It's, is it less than Atali? 
also because I have Talik better than Talik and Gitrog right now. This this deck just has access to in, the intuition pile. The like, intuition pile is so good. Jeskai pile is yeah, good. It doesn't necessarily matter what's in your command zone with Jeskai. Like, you yeah. just have access to the second best win condition in do Commander. You, do you play like, like Thought Scour in a deck like this? You don't try to feed Narset or anything, do you? I think Narset just naturally gets pretty right big. is it like the tarmogoyf rule like you just you don't need to like play things to make it good it's just gonna be it's good. just always gonna be good can you get fetch lands or is it non-land it's non-creature non-land non-creature so non-land you can't get okay. lands can't get creatures so like but you can get enchantments you can get instants and sorceries there's like a lot less cantrips that are getting played which that's i true. think does hurt this a little bit you get tutors i feel like that's the big one the demonic that's tutors huge the top yeah tutors. even top deck tutors yeah that's the one you'll see the most and you'll get when can you cast it? Once per turn? Just that? Is that it? Like, can you get a counter spell in response to something, or is it just when it deals damage? When it attacks, when it you attacks. exile it, and then you may cast the copy without paying its cost. I think it's all part of the. So counter spells are less good. Counter spells okay. are less good, but like someone else's underworld breach who failed to go off, you can get. That doesn't happen quite as often. You silenced them. I don't know. Like you have ways to set that's, that up for yourself. That's very true. Yeah. We can go back to talking about intuition pile making this deck good, but I think for now I'm still gonna keep it under Thalia and Gitrog until I see it a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. Under Thalia, Gitrog. Better than Heliod? Better than Heliod. Better I than would Slimefoot, say. Yargle, Shalai, Elshorn, and Kroxa in that definitely, order. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You ready for another top four one here, buddy? Let's do it. Ob Nixilis, captive oh. kingpin. Woof. Meow. <laughs> Two, a black and a red for a 4-3 flying trampler. It's a legendary demon, and it says whenever one or more opponents each lose exactly one life, put a plus one, plus one counter on Obnixilus Captive Kingpin. Exile the top card of your library until your next end step. You may play that card. Yeah, I'm going to maybe maybe touch of a hot take here, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think Omnixilis is like the best commander of the year. I think this card does everything. When the games that I played with this one, the ones that I lost, I felt like were definitely my fault and I should have played differently because the amount of options this deck can give you are a thousand. If you're like spinning your engines and you can spin them pretty quick because this is only four mana. You can get this on turn one off of a jeweled lotus and a land. You can get him out quick. He's a huge beat stick, but that part is not really that important at all. He just gets you so much cards you get to fill your deck with a lot of cool red interaction some of it i mean i don't know either e the only issue bolt bend right. i know what you mean yeah, right you get like, to bolt play bend. Bolt like bend. that doesn't seem very good but in this deck it really can be the only thing that it suffers from is just color combination if this was grixis this would be the best deck by a mile i think but because it's only in red black it limits you on some of the interaction that you have access to either way the cards uh ceiling is so incredibly high i actually think it's a little bit stronger than attracts i know what you mean i did not play a lot of games with this deck but the games that i did play i felt nigh unstoppable when i played them I don't think it's going to be better than Atraxa because I think if we just like look at statistics and how these decks have been doing in tournaments, I don't think I can rightfully say that Obnixilis is the best commander of 2023. I get that. Yeah. But I think it's certainly the second best commander of 2023. I guess from my biased opinion and my play strategy and the things that I like to play, I would rather play Obnixilis at a tournament than Atraxa. I think. And I didn't play Atraxa this year. You did. Yeah. The seven mana commander thing is just so many times it's just you have no access to any advantage in your command zone for the whole game. You just use it as a win condition line, and that just feels like not where I want to be. I want to have access to my commander. I want to be able to do stuff with my commander. Now, I get it. Like, we're in a Dranath Magistrate world, and Obnixilis, if there's a Dranath out, you got some questionable cards in your deck, and Atrexa, that is much less the case, but... But still the case, though. Well, yeah, but still the case. Too. At the you end have of a the big day. seven mana commander. You're like a food chain deck that you still need to get rid of. Dranath the, hits you, yeah. Right, so... I think Omnixilis is strong. I get why Traxa Four Colors does better in tournaments. I get that. But for me personally, I'd rather play Omnixilis. Well, I'm on Atraxa being better than Omnixilis. So why don't right now we say that they're at a tie? Even. Yep. Yeah, we'll say that they're even right now because it's our show. We can say we whatever, can do whatever the fuck, the fuck we, want. we want. All right, we're finally moving away from March of the Machines. Which we've had Omnixilis, Atali, and Narset from this set. And... Thalia and the Gitrog monster from this set too, and Heliod. Like there was a total of nine commanders that we talked about. What about Atali? Yeah, and uh, Attracts are the only one that's not from this set. All the other ones. Either way, let's keep uh, going. The Elish Norn. I remember Elish Norn. Okay, yeah. I hope you didn't even write her down. She's at the bottom. I have Croxa under her. You have Croxa under her. 
Yeah, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> All right. Our next set is the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth set. Oh, yeah. This set, probably one of the stronger sets overall. Not if you look at the legendary creatures, <laughs> Yeah, kind of weird, though. If you had asked me before this set came out, I would have said they're going to print a whole bunch of good commanders because there's just so many good legendary creatures in Lord of the Rings. Like, it makes sense. And to be fair, they did. There are a lot of really good commanders from the set, but... What is good? Yeah. Like, n- <laughs> not good in the sense of, like, they check off all five of the boxes of what we are looking for in CEDH commanders, but, like, they printed awesome, flavorful cards that I still love. Yes, definitely very power, very flavorful. Let's just stick with that. Very good and flavorful, fun and, and strong enough, but not strong enough for CDH. Strong enough for regular commander. Yeah. Which so is good. We only have one commander that we're going to talk about, and that's Sauron the Dark Lord. Yeah, this is three, a blue, a black and a red for a seven, six legendary avatar horror. It has ward of sacrifice, a legendary artifact or legendary creature. It says whenever an opponent casts a spell, amass one orcs. And whenever an army you control deals combat damage to a player, the ring tempts you. And whenever the ring tempts you, you can discard your hand. And if you do, you draw four cards. Yeah, this feels in some way like a Grixis Tivit. Now, it doesn't replace you on mana, which kind of makes it not that at all. But it is a six-mana haymaker that does a whole bunch of stuff. Some issues is I don't believe this is a combo piece, is it? I don't think it's a combo piece either, yeah. But we're getting a lot of value off of it. That whenever your opponents cast a spell, that thing is going to be huge. You're going to make a huge army creature very quickly. You just have to make sure you can get in with the huge army creature so that you're actually able to get in so that the ring can tempt you. You can trigger this and then draw your cards right now we are in grixis basically any grixis commander can be good you know what i mean the grixis pile is just so powerful what this brings i'm not sure if it's much more than any other grixis commander but it's still i think a powerful effect and i think it's a unique one to be explored uh, although i'm not picking it over rock sai or something like that no i love how protective protected it is though like this ward ability is probably one of the strongest ward abilities that's out there if you're in a grindy meta this one can really take over if you're in a very slow thrash dominated uh, meta i think maybe this is the grixis you'd want to lean into like if we're making a chart of like on the way to from rog sai to like uh, tevish, tevish krom. krom this is like uh, past tevish krom yeah you know, past like, this that. Is more grindy than that if like i don't want my tevish to get attacked all the time but i want to make sure i have a seven six <laughs> yeah <laughs> kill this, players in three attacks right yeah that is very relevant so cards is powerful but six mana is just a lot and doesn't win you the game right away it doesn't pay you back on mana no but it's in grixis so i think it's gonna beat out some of these other commanders that we have on the list here i still have it below heliot i think just because i've seen heliot that strategy be powerful and sauron just seems super replaceable yeah, but i think it's better than Slimefoot and yargle and shalai and all those definitely agree yeah wilds of eldraine is the next set we will explore yeah, into just one from lord of the rings yeah just the one from the lord of the Rings set yeah printed uh the, the one ring and a uh, bow master strong strongest cards of the year definitely but no good commanders. <laughs> they couldn't put any more power into the commanders than after that rowan sign of war is our first wilds of eldraine card that we'll talk about this is a legendary creature human wizard that cost one a red and a black it's a four two with menace and you can tap it for spells that you you cast this turn that are black and red and or red to cost x less to cast where x is the amount of life that you lost this turn but you can only do this at sorcery speed card is unique it does some very strong things it's very on theme for what rakdos is trying to do it's like the death shadow of cedh yeah definitely i think if it was explored more it could definitely win some tournaments i haven't seen it too much yet i don't think rakdos strategy is a strong strategy I would personally rather be an Obnix list or something like that right now. Yeah, it's hard. This card fights with really what Black wants to be doing, which is like playing ad nauseum and using your life as a resource in that way. Instead, this card makes you use your life as a resource for mana instead of cards, which is a little bit at odds with what you actually need in this color combination. You have all the mana that you need in this color combination. It's extra cards that you need. Right, and a lot of the times you it, it makes you, as a deck building process, you want to put in little things that'll lose you small amounts of life so you can cast your ad nauseum for cheaper, but then you have a deck full of things that lose you life in your ad nauseum deck, and you go, okay, that's very not so good. Now your ad nauseum just your four cards. Right, yeah, and then you, maybe you use your ad nauseum to make your things cost less after that, but then this doesn't help cast your ad nauseum, which is like, 
that that's what you you need help casting the ad nauseum. Getting to five mana can be tricky. You're you just want, running around in circles. Right. So like although it does synergize with Rakdos things, it can kind of also battle with little Rakdos things, which is I think why it's a little bit lower on the list. For me, I think it kind of it goes in the in the bottom half of the list. Under Sauron. Yeah, under Sauron, I would say too. Um, what's under Sauron? Under Sauron is Slimefoot. Is it worse than Slimefoot? Yo, I don't know. It might be. Worse than Slime. Is it worse than Yargle? No, it's definitely better than Yargle the multi. Okay, so down. we'll keep it right under Slimefoot for now. Talion the Kindly Lord. This is a good one. This is a good one. Yeah, this is two, a blue and a black for a 3-4 flying legendary fairy noble. When it enters the battlefield, you choose a number between 1 and 10. And whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses two life and you draw a card. We've been talking about Talion a lot on the podcast recently. Yeah, this one uh, immediately goes up to contention with Obnixos and Atraxa, I think. Yeah, I definitely agree. Not only are you in, like, the strongest two-color combination, but you have card draw in the command zone. Yep, yeah, that's very powerful. Four mana is the magic number for a commander because, like we were talking with Obnixilus, it's turn one Jewel Lotus, it's easy to cast off Mana Crypt in one more little piece. You can get it out quickly. Um, the only main issue that I have with it is it kind of works specifically not with Thassa's Oracle. If you have a Thassa's Oracle trigger on the stack and someone wants to cast a spell with the number value that you have, they'll make you draw a card and you'll lose the game. So you have to think about that. It's another layer. It can be worked around. It's not a big deal. Play Tainted Pact, maybe. Like sure. lean it on Tainted Pact yeah. instead. But it's just something you got to think about. And when your main strategy is consult and your commander doesn't work with it, that makes me go, ah. Fuck. You know what I mean? But Krom is the same way, and Krom Timna is the best deck in the format. So and they play Esper Sentinel, too, which right. is also the same. You know what I mean? So it can be fine. It's just something to think about when you're playing this yeah, deck. Yeah, exactly. Um, that being said, this is also a card that we're seeing get slotted into the 99 to just be, like, a really good draw engine in, like, even blue farm decks. Like, some really strong strategies, too. So really like Talion and where it stands in the meta, and I think it's only going to be a stronger option as it gets explored more in 2024. Yeah, that high toughness in a Bowmaster world is also yeah, very helpful. Yeah, definitely. I think. Yeah, it's being able alive. to like take uh, advantage of even some wraths that won't kill your commander too. Yeah, I think that's kind of nice. Definitely. Um, I have. Where do you put it in place with Obnixilus and Atraxa? I think it's honestly worse than both of those, but okay. above Atali. I think it's going to yeah. round out our top four. But Atraxa has the tournament pedigree for me to consider it to be the number one. Yeah. And Obnixilus just has so many tools that work super well with it and has so many things you're looking for in a CEDH commander. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's definitely, as so far, it's definitely those two at the top, then Talia then Talion and then Atali. We have one more from Wilds of Eldraine, but this one's from the Commander set. This is Elevir of the Wild Court. This is a 4-4 that costs two, a white and a green that says when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you create a virtuous roll token attached to another target creature you control. If you don't remember, that roll is an enchantment that says enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each enchantment you control and whenever an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage to a player you get to draw a card this one's pretty unique because not only is it card advantage in the command zone but it also is uh like it's a way to add a lot of power to your board and in a stacks deck i think that's super important we feel, I haven't seen this one a ton yet, but when I've played against this deck, it's always been a problem. Um, I think there is some future to be with this commander, for real. Yeah, naturally, this color combination does want to play creature and enchantments as stacks pieces. And what better thing to do than to like kind of combine those two aspects onto your commander and just staple a little card draw ability onto it, too? Yeah, definitely. The card drawing ability is not ideal, you know what I mean? But that's okay. You don't need it to be the best card draw in the world. It being a relevant way to increase the power on your board and put actual pressure on your opponents can also be very helpful did you already say that they struggle to find ways to close out the game and I this think help I am, push, I, push it through i implied it but i don't know if i actually said it out right but you're right it does it it finds ways to end the game also sometimes it's important to think of card advantage that if you can kill your opponents before they get to cast all of their cards and they drew a whole bunch of cards and couldn't cast them that's like card advantage for you it's like the boss lie wow way. that's Just true yeah kill them before they get to play their cards wow i technically drew 75 cards <laughs> yeah. because they're all sitting in my opponent's library sure yeah i would count them more like the cards in their hand but yes sure if you want to count the cards in the library that's fine too wow holy shit all my math just inflated. <laughs> Holy cow. Where do you put this on the list? I think it is, it's hard to say. It's probably worse than Thalia Gitrog. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think Thalia Gitrog has a, had a little bit more time to prove itself, but I think the extra color, yeah, black specifically, is really helpful. What about Narset? I think Narset's better too. Narset's better I think you're this. just in a better color combination there. What about Heliod? Is it better or worse than Heliod? Now I think we're starting to get a little bit tough. Yeah, I think it's close with Heliod. I think my unfamiliarity with Heliod is going to show here. The potential for Heliod to bust out an awesome win is significantly higher than Elevir. More explosive, access to blue. That's real stuff. White has been given a lot of good toys recently, which is really good. But it's hard to flip Heliod, though. Yeah, it's just mana. And at first, Heliod is a 4-4 that does nothing. That does kind of nothing. Yeah, large investment. Um, okay, yeah, maybe this one's better. What's the fucking name of this thing again? Elevir. Elevir. We're almost at the end of our list. Moving on. We have one Doctor Who commander to talk about. Oh, jeez, do we? Yeah. I don't know who. River Song. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. River Song won a tournament, actually. That's why <laughs> okay. I'm bringing River Song up. Um, so River Song is one a blue and a red for a 2-2 that says meet in reverse, which means that you draw cards from the bottom of your library rather than the top. And it also says spoilers. Whenever an opponent scries, surveils, or searches their library, you put a plus one, plus one counter on River Song, and then River Song deals damage to that player equal to its power. More ways to end the game. More ways to yeah. deal damage to players. I like that. I like Wizards po printing more cards like this that allow us to actually just like use that 40 life and just actually get them dead. This um, card this has cool. been, Yeah, this card has been in play when like people are trying to go off with like hoarding broodlord lines and then they realize that they're going to take 20 some damage yeah. <laughs> off of river song triggers trying to just search their library a couple times. Yeah, it does. It's a unique stacks piece. It doesn't stop a ton of stuff. It doesn't really stop anything, but it does make, make people second guess a lot of stuff. Yeah, I haven't really loved the combos that go along with this because there's just so mana intensive, but you're already in good enough underworld breach colors that you can just like lean in on that, lean in on like a dual caster mage, like these one, two combo kind of things. And then just use this to help get a little bit of extra damage in on your opponent. Worse than our top four, worse than Atalia, Thalia, Gitrog, and Narset, I think. I think it's definitely down below all of them. Probably above Yargle and Multani, though. Above Yargle and Multani. Okay, above Rowan? Yeah, I think it's better than Rowan, too. Above Slimefoot? I think it's better than Slimefoot. I'd rather be playing this than Slimefoot and Squee. What about Sauron? I'd rather play Sauron, though. Sauron. 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 Sauron's eyes are a beholdeth upon us <laughs> that's what they say in the book that's a verbatim quote <laughs> yeah this one uh this one will go there right under sauron and the last one is from the new ixalan set lost caverns of ixalan commander okay we actually don't have any cards from the main set to talk about it's so interesting okay. now the best one was the ancient one Oh, yeah, but that one's still not good. Poopy, yeah. Poop, poop. Stinky. Stinking. What was the one we just talked about also? We just talked about River Song. River Song. Our final commander of the evening. evening. Wow, look at us. Is Francisco Foul Marauder. This is a flying creature with partner. It's a zero one for one and a black. It can't block. And when one or more pirates you control deal damage to a player, Francisco explores. We went on a big Francisco exploration ourselves a couple weeks ago, so make sure you check out Play to Win Brews, a deck around Francisco Foul Marauder. We just recorded a game that we're playing on the channel. I believe it'll be going out next week to you who's watching right now or soon. It's the first gameplay of the year. So look to forward to it. To, <laughs> look forward to it then. Um, the deck is sweet. The pairing is sweet. I think it works really well with Malcolm. It is better stuff. I think what I've learned is that Agatha Soul Cauldron fucking sucks. It's not as good as everyone thinks. Yeah, is. I think I'm, I'm even from the conversation we had in last week's podcast about it, I'm even Down lower on it. Yeah. More, yeah, I wish I could. And I even like went back and listened to like, I sound pretty angry talking about Agatha Soul Cauldron <laughs> at some points. And I'm pretty sure... I like it even less now. Yeah, it just, it folds to a lot of stacks pieces. It, it just, really does. A lot of, it's very interactable in many different points, in many different ways. It's low mana investment. That's nice, but it's a little bit trickier to set up than some and other things. I don't things. want to spoil the other problem yeah. that it has, but <laughs> keep an eye out. The gameplay is very interesting. It's very, it's very good, fun game. Um, but yeah, Francisco is fine. It's cool that we have another black partner. Partners are great. They're a lot of times the strongest things to be doing in CDH. I'm sure this card will continue to pop up here and there with Malcolms or with Croms or with other shit like that. People will continue to try it. I'm probably not going to be one of them. No, I think this ended up being a lot more of a meme than yeah. anything else. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Always good to end on a meme. Where do you put this one uh, compared to Kroxa? We'll start at the bottom. Is there a meme territory? I feel like we could just put that. Kroxa is kind of in that meme territory. It's probably. Do you want to put it at the what? bottom? It's pr- It's got partner. Like, objectively, because you can play this with <laughs> Crown, yeah. it should be, like, way towards the top. Better than Elshnorn. Better than Shalai. Yeah. Better than Rowan. Better than Yargle. Yeah. Better than Slimefoot. Better than River Song. Maybe we cut it off around here somewhere. Worse than River Song. Maybe it's better than Sauron because you can play it with Crown. Okay. But if if we're judging it by itself, it should be lower than River Song. We can't really judge it by itself because we gotta judge it with its possibilities. Then it should be up above Sauron. Better than Heliod? Probably yeah, better than Heliod. Better than Elevir. I would I would cut it off here. Probably worse than Elevir. Yeah, because I think everywhere from Elevir up is, like, solidly something you could do in CEDH and feel really good about it here. And this is borderline. And this is, <laughs> this is like, the borderline part where it's, like, well, you're playing Krom in Grixis. Like, though, you're going to be able to do something good. Yeah, that's true. Would you like to hear our top ten? Or is that do we have more to talk about? Uh, no, that is it. But, like, should it be a top ten now that I just said that, like, <laughs> everything Francisco and lower isn't going to feel good? No, I mean, we can maybe. What do you want to start a little higher? You want to cut it off at five? <laughs> so I'm saying, do we do a top five now that I've been negative? Nah, or we should, should I just ten. cut out that yeah, sentence just, I said? Yeah, we'll do whatever you want. I'm going to cut around some of my little commentary here. Okay. Let's, I would love to hear the top 10, Dylan. We, we had River Song under Sauron, right? Yeah. Okay. By so, one step. So River Song, uh, Rowan, Slimefoot and Squee, Yargle, Shalai, Elshnor, and Kroxa. Y'all are honorable mentions. Oh. You're, you're close. River Song didn't make the top we 10. Just, we're just not quite there. Wow, that's interesting. Our number 10 is Sauron. Our number 9 is Heliod. Heliod. Our number 8 is Francisco. Francisco. Our number 7 is Elevir. The stack stack. Our number 6 is Narset. Not part of Avails. Number 5 is Thalia and the Gitrog. Not... The other ones. Not Thalia or the Gitrog. Yeah. Thalia and the Gitrog. <laughs> number four is Atali. Not the original one. Number three is Talion. The original one, though. Number two is Atraxa. Also not the original one. And number one is Abnixilis. Just because I'm reading the list. But if Cameron was reading the list, Abnixilis would be two and Atraxa would be one. And they honestly, got, they, they tied. They yeah, tied. They're pretty much a tie. And yeah. you're probably right. It's probably Atraxa. Oh, I know. But like, <laughs> I'm just like, we're just not going to argue about it. It's and we're fine. just going to end happy. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to end right there. Uh, yeah, that's it. Happy Christmas or New Year. Enjoy your holidays. Um... Thanks for watching or listening. Uh, if you like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Devlin, Mark Cirillo, Alan Button, Lowercase, Zachary Nelson, She Doesn't Even Go Here, SoCal, Acura, Stormageddon, Luke Cook, AJ Albusabi, Demon of Rosgrees, Uncle Butch, Quaja A. Hamid, Lauren Connell, and Baby G Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Thank you so much, Dragon Shield, for supporting the show. Make sure that you use our affiliate link down below and code PLAYTOWIN. Five to get 5% off your order. You can follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram for more content. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Or listening. Alex Musselman, Tyler H., Tyler the Tree, Malcraft, Driving, Crooner, Jabaha, Dalton Poti, Kidanis, Lutri's Dad, Mitchell Shepard, Justin, Mansolo, Pedro, Jacob Depp, Michael Ballou, Jan Wild, Fane, Thomas Bueno, and David Nelson. Are you ready? Sure. Doesn't sound very confident. <laughs>